Okay, okay. John, uh, you have been involved with saving a lot of these old classic vessels uh, over the years. Why was Ida so important to save? Well, it was a, well, we hadn't, hadn't had a Bailey before, so that was one reason. And it was through to the article on Buddy New Zealand, your mag, that um, was publicised that it was in Australia and up for reconstruction or whatever and no one was interested in Australia so I said to Wayne oh, we'll better go and have a look at this thing and thank God we did. Yeah. Had you seen her before she left our shores? No I, d I didn't know anything about Ida basically until it was in the mag you know I think there was a couple of articles by Harold wasn't it? Chas Bailey, Ida, is it an important vessel in his lineage of vessels? Um... Well, I think so. Like any boat, it's important. It's 1895 construction. And uh, I need a project. And, and we'd finished all our other projects with Logan. So I said, Wayne, come on, we're going to Aussie to have a look at this thing and see if it's worth repairing. And I understand that she was a fairly quick vessel in her time. I understand so, through because Bruce Marlow I lunch with every Wednesday at the squadron and his family of course connected with the famous Rafferty who was at the top boat and Bruce when I showed him a photograph of this thing when it was in its sorry state said Ida, he said my god he said we've chased her around the water about backside around the harbour all, all, for years and I said hang on him but, but Rafferty was the gun boat oh, and he said oh, it's quick so it's going to be very interesting to see how it performs. Yes, uh, have you got a, a sort of a timeline now in terms of she's going to have, she's going to be stepped and then taken after a few sails, I gather. <clears throat> yeah, they're, they're going to step the mast here, put all the gear aboard, put it in the water, mark the waterline because we're not sure where the waterline is. Wayne's certain it'll be lighter than what it was when it came back from Aussie because it's pretty waterlogged at that stage. And then we're going to take it down to Auckland on Friday next week. And so it'll be on display for three days outside the squadron on the dinghy locker thing. And we'll have a function when we get over this COVID problem yes. in a, a, a proper launching party at the squadron. Uh, Andy Bull is going to be skipping her. Um, I understand she's going to be raced as she was intended. Yeah. She's going to be a race boat. She's going to be definitely a race boat. And Andy, of course, is as competitive as anybody. Mm. And he's been a huge help because he came early on in the piece and said, I'd like to volunteer my services to sail on it. Well, that morphed into, well, you're skipper, mate. And so he and his mate Paul Meyer worked out the rig because there was no drawings of the boat left anywhere. And so um, he's been a huge help in that, with Wayne doing all the construction side. And he's done a lot of the running around message boy and organising gear. And This is the last one. You've done enough of these, do you think? As my mate Peter Blake said, never say never. I don't know. I need a project, I think. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be pruning the roses at home. <laughs> Wayne, you've done many of these sort of restorations of these classic yachts. Either was difficult, different? A um, lot more work than I anticipated, um, to be completely honest, um, with the amount of rot in the boat. And um, I don't really, um, a lot of like all the patterns, uh, the pattern making for all the castings and everything, it, uh, you know, we ended up unfortunately having to make patterns for every single thing except one item so every bit of bronze castings on 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 the boat's been made from scratch so then you've got to make you know you're going to make the patterns get it cast get it machined get it polished you know so um yeah so some things like the hull i mean mm. uh, it's, the boat's over 100 years old mm. and you said there was a bit of rot in it was there structural issues that you had to address yep. in terms of it sagging or anything like that yeah yeah there was the the boat hadn't hogged so so when she came in, it wasn't um, 
as bad but being three skins we had to replace all the a lot of the planking into the turn of the bilge all the way down into the kelson so which was difficult i've got to say every single floor has been replaced um all the putakawa was just paper mache so every single floor throughout throughout the whole boat's been replaced we put extras up forward just to sort of strengthen it so um yeah it was um was a little bit more work than i anticipated then even with uh, to the deck, we um, because we don't put fastenings in the decks so and no screws or anything, so um, it wasn't obvious how much shape was in the deck until we actually started. And um, it got to the point where we thought, because as we came in, it got tighter and tighter. I thought we're actually not going to get this now, now because it was it was quite um, you know, you know it was quite a struggle just just to bend them. Um, the original the outer skin would have been corked originally. Mm. Um, you decided not to go down the corking route, the traditional route, and said you went for a splining the, solution the boat had been splined in sydney in the late 70s it had already done mm, so yeah but unfortunately been spline spline that looks like oregon so a lot of the splines were um uh had big shakes in them and big splits in them so so yeah the boat had been splined prior okay. um if it had been cooked i would have splined it anyway and it is it's a logical solution to go I, with i him. believe so yes yeah, just I because so. it, it reduces the maintenance on these vessels exactly down the track um you know, you spline them, you glass them, and um, you know, there's not always going to be the John Streets of this world. Um, you know, that are going to keep paying to restore these boats. See, so um, and that way you can put a two pot e uh, paint on, so the paint lasts a lot longer. You know, you know everything structurally. But just splining the boats, even if you don't glass them, just splining them uh, structurally just stiffens them up. Um, see, because Thelma's not glassed. I didn't glass her. We splined her, but I didn't glass her. Right. And, the other thing I wanted to ask you about is the uh, the rig. Um, you made that mast, the original mast. I don't know if it, it wasn't in a good shape, but um, no, no, the no. gaff, the boom, the yeah. bowsprit. You yeah. made all of these. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that, that's that's an unusual sort of skill, I suppose, to see these days. I mean, is there's a particular. Yeah, I've done, I've done. I've I've done a lot of spars now. Now it's you know so it's um, and it's and always the same same technique where you have four quadrants as it were yeah basically yeah so the spars are always hollow yeah. but they have a wall thickness of depending on the size of the mast anywhere from sort of uh, twenty mil to maybe thirty five mil depending on the size quite labour intensive because because it's all done by hand so there's lots of planing like um you know this mast here um, it's only fourteen and a half meters long the main mast. But there's still uh, there's still over a week just hand planing once you've power planed and um, and that's without even starting to fair it and sand it that's just to get the rough shape so um yeah pretty labour intensive yeah and the um, I gather that the shrouds and the stays that are used to hold this rig mm -hmm. up is a very modern material traditionally she would have had a galvanised yep. wire presumably yep. Yep. so this is Aramara which is an Italian product mm. but uh, it looks remarkably like a galvanised yeah, wire yeah that was one of the reasons that they decided to go for it because of the colour. And, and that, so if you stand away from it, it would be hard to tell. But when you get up close, I mean, um, I, this is the first I've had nothing to do with um, with this material before. Paul Meyer, who drew the rig and's done all the rigging, he's done a fabulous job. It's just, um, and when you see the splices and everything, it's, it's very easy to work, extremely easy. It's not expensive, and um, and yeah, it just it looks really. So and nice. presumably the maintenance on that again would be much lower than yeah. if you'd even put yeah. stainless steel yeah. uh, shrouds yeah. and, yeah. and very, stuff yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah. But the whole standing rigging in the boat came in a bag that was probably less than 20 kgs, the whole lot, yeah. except yeah. for the inner four stay. That's the, yeah. the only um, one because the because the head still hangs on to that. So the whole everything on the boat except for one uh, the inner four stay um, is synthetic. And, and like I said, it all turned up and you know, less <laughs> yeah. than a sack of potatoes. Amazing. Um, two more things. Um, the engine, the, she had the original old, I don't know what it was, but it was obviously dead. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And you put in a new, better? Yeah, uh, better, 25 horse, better, yeah. With a folding prop, which would be a first on the vessel like this. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and that, that's a racing folding prop too. So um, so Andy Ball, who's gonna skip of the boat and look after the boat, he's, um, he's pretty passionate about speed. <laughs> Speed. so uh, that was one of his and sis, yeah. sis he, he, you know I keep saying to him well Andy it's not a race boat you know it's an old boat and all he keeps saying to me is Wayne it's only ever going to be race we only race them so therefore it's a race boat <laughs> simple the other thing is uh, she wouldn't have had a toilet no. in the original is that something which how does that come about why does one put it on uh, we'd always put a toilet on and um, a holding tank because they do about three overnighters 
um, a race is three or four, um, stay away. So you need a toilet, um, yeah. basically, and that. So, um, but no cooking or anything like that because there's mother ships here. They tie type against. But I think you know if you're going to take take the girls away or the girls go to racing and everything, you know, you have a few drinks afterwards and everything. It's quite nice just to pull the curtain, you know. Fantastic. Thank you so much and congratulations. She's nice. a magnificent piece of work. Yeah, she's come up. Um, I can't believe how small she looks now. Actually, she doesn't look that small. It's one in the shed, but yeah. We'll just his, we'll just have to see how she goes. I'm sure she'll go very well. Thank you so much, yep. Wayne. No worries. Thank you. John Ackleson from Boating New Zealand. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd like to see more of these videos, please subscribe to our channel.